What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Weekly Ranking Show, where we go through all the ATP and WTA changes in the rankings this week, and also the race to the finals. Of course, the ATP finals in Turin and the WTA finals in Shenzhen. We're talking about those as well, because there are some changes in those. Let's start with the winners from last week, because we had six tournaments on last week and some really surprise winners, and they got rewarded in the rankings as well. So let's start with the Hamburg Open. We had Karina Buster. He defeated Krajanovic in straight sets. Now that is an ATP 500 event, so it's worth a lot of points for the winner. So Karina Buster, he won that one. We also had the Newport Open, which was an ATP 250 event with Kevin Anderson beating the unseated Brooksby in straight sets, 7-6-6-4. And then on the clay courts, we had in Bastard, Kasper Rudd. He is on fire on clay this year. And he wins another tournament, defeating Coria in straight sets, 6-3, 6-3. Over to the women's side of things, and we have the Budapest Open, another clay court event, a WTA 250 event. We have Putin Seba, the number one seed. She defeated the unseated Kelanina in straight sets, 6-4, six, 6-love. Six, then over to Switzerland, Another clay court event, the WTA 250 event, where Zedenshek won her first title, defeating Burrell in a very close final, three-setter, 4-6, 7-6, 6-1. And then over to the Prague Open, which was a hard court event, with the French Open champion Krejcikova defeating countrywoman Martin Kova in a very convincing final. Straight sets win there, 6-2, six, 6-love. Six, so some huge results there from some of the players that are pushing towards the top 10. Okay, let's go start with the top 10 for the women this week. And no real big changes. Ash Barty, she stays at number one. Naomi Osaka still number two, followed closely by Arena Sabalenka at number three. Sophia Kennan, she's at number four, with Bianca Andreescu very close behind at number five. And Alina Svetolina, very close behind Andreescu at number six. Karolina Pliskov is at number seven. Igas Fiontek is at number eight. And we do have a change at the very bottom of the top 10, with Simona Halep going down a spot to number 10, and Muguruza going up to number nine. And that's because Halep did not play the Prague Open last week, where she was the champion from last year. So she lost some points because she didn't play that tournament. Having a look at the race to the finals now, the race to the WTA finals in Shenzhen. Ash Barty, she stays at number one, of course, having just won Wimbledon a couple weeks ago. But Sabalenka, she drops down to number three with Krejcikova going up to number two again after winning last week in Prague. So she gets a lot of points for that. And of course, Sabalenka didn't play. So there was a change there. Sviante comes in at number four with Pliskova at number five, Osaka at number six, Muguruza at seven, Pavlachenkova at number eight, followed very closely by Ons Jabor at number nine, and Koko Goff rounds out the top 10. Having a look at some of the players that went up in the rankings this week. Speaking of Krejcikova, she is at a career high ranking now. She's gone up two spots to number 11 and she is knocking on the door of that top 10. Career high ranking for her. And Zedenshek, after winning her first title of her career, she's gone up 13 spots to a career high 37 in the world. And she's having a great season on the clay courts, especially. Caps it off with a title and a career high ranking. Some of the players that have dropped down in the rankings this week. We have Ferro. She's dropped down 12 spots to number 64. So she's dropped down because she failed to defend the points that she got two years ago from winning the WTA 250 event in Switzerland. So she couldn't back that up. So she lost a lot of points. And Gina Bouchard, she's gone down 11 spots, down to 129 in the world, still recovering from shoulder surgery that she got a couple of weeks ago. All right, let's jump over the top 10 for the men this week. And no big changes at all because most of those players didn't play with the exception of Stefano Sitipas. So Novak Djokovic stays at number one. Daniel Medvedev still at number two with Rafa Nadal at number three, followed closely behind by Stefano Sitipas. But because he didn't play that well at Hamburg, he had the chance to go to number three, but couldn't take it. So he stays at number four this week with Zverev at number five, followed extremely closely behind by Dominic Team at number six, Rublev's at number seven, Berrettini at number eight, Federer at number nine, and Denis Shapovalov rounds out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race to the finals, the race to Turin, and again, no real big changes with Novak Djokovic staying at number one, Stefano Tsitsipas still at number two, Berrettini staying at number three, followed by Rublev at number four, very closely followed by Zverev at number five. Medvedev stays at number six. Rafa Nadal is just behind Medvedev at number seven with her catch at number eight. Karatsev at number nine. And Denis Shapovalov, he's dropped out of the top 10 with Kasper Ruud jumping back in after winning a tournament last week on the clay. All right, let's have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week. And Krajanovic, after having a great week in Hamburg, beating Tsitsipas, made the final... He's gone up 10 spots, number 34 in the world. So he is reaching his career high ranking again. And Kevin Anderson, he won the Newport Open last week. So he's gone up in the rankings, 39 spots back into the top 100 to 74 in the world. Had a really good week last week on the grass court. So Kevin Anderson won a title and he's back. 
in the top 100. Some of the players that dropped down in the rankings, John Isner. He's gone down five spots to number 39 in the world after failing to defend the points that he won at the Newport Open two years ago. So Isner's dropped down five. And Basilashvili, he's gone down 13 spots to number 42 in the world, again, after failing to defend the points that he made at the Hamburg Open two years ago. So two players that didn't back up their form from a couple of years ago in events that happened last week have both dropped down in the rankings. So there it is, the rankings for the week. No big changes this week. Not too many of the players that we're used to seeing play during week to week play this week. But this week, some of the players are playing, like Shapovalov. He's in action this week. So we'll keep an eye on him. Maybe he might be able to go up the rankings if he has a good week this week. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think should be in the top 10 maybe for the race to the finals? Because the race to the finals, we're only halfway there through the season. And we're missing some big names. You know, Dominic Team. he's not in the top eight for the finals. And Serena Williams, she's also missing from the finals race on the women's side. So let me know down in the comments below. Who are you seeing that's a surprise that's missing? Or who are you shocked that's actually in the race to the finals? Because remember, the ATP and the WTA finals at the end of the year, the best eight players of the season play against each other. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in the top 10 of the actual rankings. It's only what happened during the year. So let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most shocked about seeing in or out of those rankings? So not too many changes this week in the rankings, but next week and the week after, big tournaments are coming.